Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Persona Q and today we're going to be continuing on with the Clock Tower. We still got a long ways to go till we are at the top. And today we're going to be taking on two more floors. And the puzzles are going to get a little bit trickier. Still nothing too intimidating, just more spiders. That honestly aren't that hard. I don't think I mentioned the previous episode, but they are weak to electricity. So by all means, if you feel like fighting them, fight them. In fact, if you actually do kill one, as I maneuver around here and do not want to get hit, yeah, there we go. You will actually get the ultimate armor for every character, which we could do right now, or we could hold off until a little bit later. And, ah! What the? the floor sunk in! It did. Hey. Look at that. There's a number written on the floor. Hmm. What's this about? 12? It's some kind of trap. Yamagishi, we need a situation report. I, I don't sense any dangers. Eh? I see. This could be another one of those bizarre puzzles. Hmm. What could this number mean? We can't do more than speculate about it here. We must proceed cautiously, step by step. Okay, even though I'm literally going to tell you what the number means. Basically, you have 12 steps until this gate closes. And you cannot get here in 12 steps. It's kind of evil like that. Yeah, I need to move that gate a little bit. <laughs> My mapping is not perfect, mind you. And... Oh, you're right. Does that mean we'll never find a way to open it? <laughs> How does this relate to number 12? Well, oh my gosh. Sometimes, reading that is pointless because I can tell you <laughs> much easier the puzzle. Anyways, we have some king castles here. I believe they're weak to Garu attacks and instant death skills. Let's hit them up with a Mama Dune. And work around from there. Might as well cast Bufu down on the guy in the back. We still got Garu down. Coming from Akihiko. Doing pretty decent damage. Could be better. You know what's really great damage? Killing everything in one hit. Close, close. Hey, we got one. That's good enough for me. <laughs> so hopefully this uh, Zio die. Oh, actually, another weak did. I say Garu. I meant Zio. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, though. The enemies are not too terribly difficult to take down. Honestly, though, I would just run from any enemies you do not care about. At this stage in the game, fighting FOEs is a way better way to get EXP. And honestly, the enemies just aren't worth it. They don't give a lot. So it's not really beneficial to do that. Hmm. I don't want Aegis to do I guess you can just do that. I'm guessing the heck, the battle could very well end if we just get another Mama Dune off. So. I guess it doesn't really matter. In the grand scheme of things, another Garudine attack. And come on, Mama Dune! Darn it. <laughs> I, I really like the battles that just end instantly with Naoto killing everything, but sometimes you don't get that, unfortunately. Alright, ugh. I guess still, even though her persona evolves, she will have that weakness to um, electricity, and so does Akiko. He still has his ice weakness, so. You could patch that up with some accessories, but in my opinion, they really should have just gotten rid of that. I'm not sure why they did. It was kind of weird. I'm just like, alright fine. I mean, I, I guess it kind of balances it. I'm not, I'm not really complaining, because Akihiko and I guess have some of the best stat spreads of any characters in the game, so I guess it sort of balances it out, but I don't know. <laughs> guess it's just me nitpicking and wanting a perfect team when I don't really want to use an accessory to get rid of that weakness. Anywho, that battle went on forever. What we're supposed to do in this room to open up this gate is that there is a six right to the right of us. Step on this, and we can go through the door very easily. Not a hard puzzle, just showing you some gameplay mechanics. After all, the gate is closed! Oh, oh poor Koromaru, what's wrong? Please take a look. I call it Koromaru-san being frightened by his tail almost getting caught in the gate. What? What's with the title? <laughs> I see. So there's a time limit. Well, it's not much of an obstacle so long as we get through the gate within the time limit. Yeah, and hopefully you don't get cut off halfway. But for that, we need to observe our surroundings carefully, or look at the map I already made. The shadows have gotten pretty strong, you know. Yes, they have, Yukari, but we are stronger, gosh dang it. Make sure to keep your tail tucked in, okay? <laughs> Sting Komaru, man. I kind of do regret using him, but... I don't know. And here's another lock treasure box, and you're gonna have to complete a request to get that. So we're gonna be skipping that and coming through this door. Hmm. 
Mitsuru, are you brooding over something again? Well, you never get tired of that, do you? I was just reflecting on how much Kronos and I have in common. Say what? When it came to the Dark Hour, and what happened here, my only thought was for settling those matters. I never considered the feelings of Takeba or the others who fought at my side. It's easy to call them companions, but I may have been doing so to treat them like pawns. Yukari mentioned that. How we weren't just pawns, and that she was glad she came here. I feel the same way. If we hadn't come here, we might not have bridged those gaps between us. I knew that deep down, though. I knew, but pretended not to notice. Even though that's no better in the end than running from the problem. I'm such a fool. You mean we, no? I could say the same for myself. We'll need to tackle them face to face from now on. Huh, you're right. Well then, I'll hold nothing in reserve. Yeah, I better do the same. Against my past self. And him, too. I want to rely more on my companions as well. There are things I wish to open up to them about. It's still frightening, but I must approach them head on. Looks like we'll have our hands full once we get back. Right. You better start thinking now about what you want on the menu. Pancakes! No one asked you. This is all thanks to your guidance as our leader. I hope that you continue to provide it. Very well. We will all return together, come what may. Don't worry, Mitsuru. I'll keep leading this team for as long as I have to. 100% chest, yeah. Swiss so isn't all that big, actually, so I kind of recommend... Oh, crap, I don't have any play coins, but... I kind of recommend, like, 100%ing these fours, because they're relatively easy compared... Or actually, they're not easy, but they're easy to 100%, rather than going back to all the other floors 100%ing them. Are you serious? Come on, give me a good setup here. There we go. Crying a lot, you stupid spiders, but yeah. Our next puzzle is we have to step on this 12 switch and make it back to this next door. It's kind of easy. I like it though. I like this is how you do the puzzles, man. Just, I don't know. There's some puzzles in this game I really didn't like because they're kind of convoluted in the way that you solve them. <laughs> These ones are great though, and we'll get through the gates extremely easily. Now we don't have to worry about it again. We got some dirty crystals. That's kind of weird. It kind of reminds me of the sandwiches a little bit. <laughs> but uh, no. Let's come to the south part of the third floor, and we're going to be introduced to a very new gameplay mechanic. We got a dead end. Sort of. And one moment, please. What could this button be for? Seriously, no one just ran up and hit the button. That's what the first the first thing I would have do done was hit the button. Just saying. Why do we not try pushing this button if being pushy doesn't work? <laughs> First and foremost, that's not how you use that phrase. <laughs> oh man. And anyway, it's probably for the best that we don't push this obviously suspicious button. No. no. I guess may have a point. Uh, you're usually the careful one around here. Yeah, good point. I mean, this could unleash something terrible. Even I get tired of being the prize people sometimes. <laughs> In our journey here, I've realized that caution isn't everything. One must be bold at times. I agree, actually. We haven't pushed this button yet. We can always step back out. And so I guess was exactly correct, huh? Uh, okay, I mean, it's worth a shot, I guess. And all right then, Mitsuru-san, you do the honors. Should we have the, like, person made of steel push it in case there's an explosive? I guess we'll probably survive. <laughs> Just saying, and Mitsuru cautiously pushes the button. There it is, and what do you know? It left the thing up crazy. Yeah, I see. This wall is built like a piston. This button seems to control its vertical movement. Yeah, could have just said, hey, we can go now, let's go. <laughs> this concludes Mitsuru-san's first pushing up a <laughs> That's no way to finish off. Ugh. The wall went up, it might be blocking something on the next floor now. We should keep an eye out. That is actually a fantastic tip, because that's exactly what it does. So look out for that. 
Alright, these random battles are starting to annoy me because we're not running into the new enemies, even though there are new enemies to get on this floor. Slightly annoying. Not slightly annoying is a chest with the Cosmo Dog Suit. Ooh. Very, uh, very good armor, I guess, for Komaru. Or it could totally suck, I have no idea. Because I haven't used it yet. And everyone, I'm sensing the presence of the Reefer on this floor, too! Looks like they're not playing around anymore. Yeah, whenever they ever been playing around in... <laughs> Don't worry, might not look like it, but we're used to rescuing folks. <laughs> that is definitely true, she eh? <sighs> Just keep your mind on when we reach the summit and you're reunited with Frey. Oh, that's not bad advice. I'm sorry. Don't be zen, come on. Or rather, thank you. <laughs> What better time than now to show the results of our training? <laughs> Let's go, Chie. <laughs> right away, mess. <laughs> kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of funny. Anyways, mapping the next floor now. Alright, this next floor is... Kind of... I want to say rough, it's actually not that bad. We got a couple chests to get, but this first segment could be a little rough. We got a lot of these spider FOEs that we gotta deal with. I might have just screwed myself over. No? I think we'll be okay. Yeah, they're gonna go around. Yeah, should be fine. Let's see, are they gonna come around and hit me? No, I'm good, okay. We're gonna step through this secret passage very quickly, and the Reaper's right there! Hey, Reaper, how's it going? And then we're gonna get this treasure chest and basically get the crap out, because we do not want to deal with the Reaper, obviously, so... Yeah, now we gotta do that whole process over again. Just get that mediocre item in a chest. I did say I would be 100%ing this game very early on in the Let's Play, and I'm still trying to make the most complete guide possible, but at the end of the day, there are certain items that are high priority to obtain, and some that just flat out aren't. And are we gonna get hit here? No, we should be fine once we get to this area, yeah. All right, we're good, sweet. So then that part has been taken care of. This is gonna get a lot easier. And we got a new enemy here, the Purple Sigil, which is weak to fire attacks, and hopefully we can KO relatively easily. If I do recall, it is resistant to insta-kill attacks, so hopefully you have some fire-type personas. Not really fire-type personas, but some personas that know fire attacks to knock them out. Uh, we could cast... Well, hmm. I guess Mama Doom would technically be better, since I do think the Yotan, which is how you pronounce that, I finally learned... Uh, resists it, I believe. Yeah. Oh, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> I was like spacing, I was like, wait, am I thinking of something else? But no, I was thinking in Persona 3 that it resists Hama and Mudo. But you know, doesn't matter. The. Ah, crap. That's not really gonna do anything. I was kind of hoping that would hit the Yotan, but I guess not. The. A the not the Aegis Shield, the. Purple Sigil does like use magic attacks, and I do believe it can poison us too, but I'm not 100% on that. But honestly, it doesn't have a ton of HP. Just make sure you have some attacks that can hit it all the way in the back of the room, and it should be fine. Uh, I want to do Myriad Arrows or Heavy Shot. I guess we'll do Myriad Arrows. Cast another Mama Dune. Unfortunately, now that I was getting a little bit low on SP, which is kind of bad, because she's always spamming her instant death skills. For good reason, they are extremely strong after all. And come on, Myriad Arrows! Got one hit? Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, 250 damage is nothing to scoff at. And I really didn't lose that much HP for doing it either, so. Can't really complain. But yeah, the Purple Sigil, not really too intimidating. Okay, we hit it. Sweet. Not really too intimidating to take down. Just keep hitting it. Maybe get some crits with some physical attacks, and you should be fine. Alright, and look at that EXP! Look at that EXP! It's absolutely horrible. I hate it. I hate it so much. Why are they giving me such bad EXP at this point in the game? I do not understand. I mean, I'm fighting these enemies at my level when I'm supposed to fight them. It's completely... I don't, I don't know. That's maybe one of my main criticisms with this game. That At a certain point, there's no real reason you should be fighting random encounters. They kind of just waste your time, but I'll, I'll save that towards... You know, at the end of the Let's Play for my final thoughts. Anyways. This next room up here has the Reaper in it and also that piston. And that piston. So what are we going to do here? Well, we're actually going to go back to the third floor and change things around a little bit. First thing you want to do is you want to get the secret passage. And let me... I think I'm supposed to activate both these pistons. 
No, I need this one up. Do I need the other one down? I can't remember. Huh, anyways. There is mail right in there. I think... No, I think this one needs to be down, right? Yeah, and then we're gonna get the other one... Crap, I cannot remember. Well, I guess we're about to find out. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. I need I need this one to come down. So we need to go back downstairs really fast. But no, this, the one to the leftmost should be up. We want that one up. So we can actually beat the Reaper. Anyways, hit this switch again. Get that one up. And then we're going to return to the fourth floor again. And alright, so now we can get the Reaper out of here. And because we have that piston up to the left, we can actually evade the Reaper and get around him and get to where we need to go. So come on, Reaper. Follow me. <laughs> yeah, there's two Reapers on this floor. Kind of, uh... Oh, you, you guys will see. Kind of annoying. All right, I think I'm doing this right. Yeah, he's going to follow us, and because that piston is all the way up, he would not actually be able to catch us because the Reaper is kind of slow. Yeah, that's how you complete that puzzle. And let's get the shortcut just so we can always get back here whenever we ever need to for whatever reason. And now we're moving on to the fifth floor. Yeah, those two floors were kind of on the short side, but this next one is decently difficult, and I don't sense any FOEs. Even so, please stay on guard and use caution. Sure thing. We run from the Reaper and Tartarus. Now we're run from it here. <sighs> we're not a bunch of wheat ready to be harvested, dang it. That's the dorkiest way you could say that. To them, all life is treated equally as targets. If it finds us, it will pursue us to the ends of the earth. Is that creamer thing really... It's not sweet. That's for sure. <laughs> I think he said a reaper, but he said creamer. Really be strong and scary. Be off if we don't fight it. All right, got it. Dang, Kanji's so sensible. He's like, wow, this thing could kill us. Screw that. <laughs> uh, sure, let's let's go with that. Never change, Kanji. <laughs> Crap, I forgot what he said. Dude, what's that supposed to mean? It must mean that you're the best, the way you are, I assume. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, let's, let's, let's think about it on the positive side. And, oh, uh, yeah, right behind you. Anyways, fifth floor, gotta map it, so be right back. And all right, our map is now made. Now, look at this floor. If you're playing the game at home, uh, have fun in here. But luckily... If you are and you want a god, I can help you out. This room is the first room that's gonna have another elevator. And hmm, basically these guys are just gonna say, "Hey, we found the elevator," and now it's I was gonna investigate it a bit. Cool. There's a switch and a door that slides open and closed. I guess this is an elevator. Yeah, I guess. So we got an escape route. Something goes wrong, or you don't have any go homes, but you should definitely have some go homes, because sometimes you get smushed up against an FOE and you can't beat them necessarily, or run away. And uh, hey, you can't go alone. I'll come with you. Uh, can't you? Kill? <laughs> I understand. Well then, shall we give it a test run? Sure. Now it's Owen Kanji. You leave down the same elevator. Oh no! What's gonna happen? Yeah. Huh? Absolutely nothing. The elevator functions properly. Yeah. And the pair returns. Oh, That's a fruit! Oh, welcome back. How was it? More or less, as expected. That ever leads to the first floor. We should mark it on our map way ahead of you, sister. Thank you, Kanji Kun. Your presence was very reassuring. <laughs> was it good, I guess? <laughs> Kanji seems awkward for some reason when he's around Naoto-san. Uh, you'll, you'll get it when you're older, man. Just just saying it. Uh, don't treat me like a kid. Oh my gosh, stinking Ken, dude. Sorry, man. So sensitive. Anyways, we got that elevator. Now this next room has another one of these time switches on it. I've already marked the path with the auto walk feature on how to get to the door the fastest way possible. It's like that. Yeah, pretty easy. And I think I have this arrow wrong, actually. Yeah, there's not one over here, so let me get rid of that real quick. Where the dump is my stylus? There you go. <laughs> okay. So let us now proceed onward into the next room. There's gonna be more of these really long 
See, I don't mind these puzzles, because, you know... It's kind of just trial and error, and oh my gosh, a red tank. The Scarlet Turret is weak to ice attacks. And I only have one character with ice attacks. We should probably get more ice, actually. Anyways, I'm just going to cast Mahama. Uh, no, I'm just going to use Gardai, because there's a Rampage Drive. Uh, let's do... I guess I can hit him with electricity. I don't really have any stronger attacks. Do that. I can guess Mama Dune, I guess. I mean, I just prefer the fire. Or actually, now the fire. The, <laughs> the dark attacks. I just feel like they do have a higher chance of killing than Hama. I know that it's literally the same, but I, I just, I don't know. That's just how my mind works, I guess. We're going to cast Gumri Dot. Well, I guess in Shimagami Tensei, half the time. There's a lot more enemies with ha with Mudo skills than Hama. Either way. I'm going to kill the guy in the back, which I was trying to show the weakness of. But no, trust me, he is weak. It's ice attacks, because you want know, Scarlet, kind of like fire. Even though they're of the Chariot Arcana. And gosh dang, I feel, I feel like every time I use Bufudine, it was going to hit an enemy that was weak to it. And instead, it hits the Rampage Drive. But yeah, these tanks really aren't too big a problem. They just do generic physical attacks. And honestly, if you know the weakness, you should be fine. And yes, now it's out. I know you're low on energy. I'm trying to hurry and end the episode off so we can all go and rest. But... Should I do fire? Yeah, let's try fire. I'm, I can't remember if it's weak to fire or not. Honestly, without the, um... What am I trying to say? You can scan the enemies. No, 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 okay. You can't scan the enemies, but you can memorize the weaknesses. This game could have really benefited from a scan feature, because half the time it takes forever to try and see what an enemy is weak to. There's a lot of attacks to try. And yeah, it's gonna hit me with Bufu. No big deal. Happy shot, come on! Big damage, nice. I guess getting them crits, which will lead to an all-out attack. Which this actually means we'll get more EXP for finishing this battle. So that's also kind of cool. Yeah. It's always nice when you finish a battle off with an all-out attack. It just feels right, you know. <laughs> Anyways, we're also gonna get a new persona of the Hermit. Hermit Arcana is not my favorite, so don't be pat. Dang, we have a lot of items. I was not expecting that, but. Yeah, a lot of uh, hermit personas suck. And Reese, shut up! I know what I'm doing. Gosh dang it! All right. So now our next goal is crap. I did not want to step on that. No, actually, it doesn't matter. Our next goal is to get to this six, sort of in the center of the room, and then we're gonna use the auto walk feature again and take this exact path to get through the door. And then we're gonna continue our path, go through the secret passage, step on this nine, and not go through the first shortcut. Instead, go through the second come down south a little bit, step through this door, and we should make it through the gates very, very easily. Yeah. And then get into a battle with a Jotun of Grief. Ooh, I think the yeah, these are new enemies. So we need to knock them down. Let's try to see what attack, fire attack on the back row. Could use Moragi Don, why not? It's gonna drain all of Igus's SP, but heck, why not? I, I, I can't see a reason not to do it. And I cast Healing Breath because, well, our HPs could be a little bit better, and I'm not too sure. Actually, did I say Healing Breath? I meant Healing Breeze. Because I'm dumb, apparently. Damn, when was the last time we saw Caesar, dude? Gosh. The Jotons of Gr Jotun <laughs> of Grief are weak to electricity, so hit him up with that, and you should be alright. Let's hit that uh, white sigil in the back. Some fire attacks. I, well, dang, everyone. If we dodge every attack. Crap. I was about to say. Darn it, man. I really want to do an all out attack. We might. No, you can't even all out attack on the first turn, I don't think. So. That's whatever. But no, if I guess didn't get hit, everyone would have been boosted, which would have been fantastic, because everyone would go first. Then who would go first? Eh. You know what I mean. We all have priority. I'm going to cast Meggy Dolone because, well. Naoto has the boost, and her attack will cost zero SP, which is a really nice combo, actually. Naoto's Megidolones, that cost zero SP, man. I'll take it. I don't think we've seen this attack yet. Yeah, it looks really cool. It has a high chance to knock enemies down, too, since she has that uh, one ability, which I appreciate very much. Let's try another Agdon attack, try and get some more boost on our party. And yeah, uh, I th wait. Oh, I thought he was knocked down. No, that's just what the white sigil looks like when it's... uh. You know, dazed and confused. Let's try a heavy shot on... Wow, that did jack crap. I guess they do resist uh, pierce attacks, which would make sense, because, you know, 
giant fat guys. They absorb that kind of stuff. Let's use a Zeo attack. Uh, let's use one of those. Yeah, we need to get her SP up a little bit. And alright, this should be the last turn of this battle if everything goes accordingly. White Sigil's out of there. White Sigil's honestly not a big deal, though. They not really do that much damage. They do not resist fire, which is nice. And Caesar should finish... No, no, no. Guess we should probably kill them both at the same time. That snuff soul might have been a waste, but I don't know. Made sense at the time. Uh, Primal Force doing 200 damage, which is kind of a lot and kind of isn't at the same time. I don't know why I did another uh, heavy shot there, but hey, it worked out in the end. Uh, no SP left on you. Good heavy shot, I suppose. Uh, hmm. Let's do another one of those. And yeah. These guys have a lot of health, man, and I don't have any elect boosts or amps, so my Zeodines, they do okay damage, but they could definitely be better at the end of the day. Either way, though, another victory for our team, and we're almost done with this place, too. And alright, let's see. Brutal Slash. Yeah, I don't really have a use for Paths of Light, so I guess I'll get rid of that, and yeah, looks pretty good. And we really need to go to visit Theodore and get rid of all these items and such, but I guess we'll do that after we're done with this floor. Come on, hurry! I think our senpai have changed a bit. They always look so stern, but they seem softer now. I thought of Mitsuru senpai as this perfect superwoman who could do anything, but she's still human. To be honest, though, I never exactly made the effort to approach Mitsuru Senpai and the others either. They're only a year apart, but the stuff they're dealing with, it's on a whole other level. I was so afraid to say the wrong thing that I didn't even want to face them, let alone try to understand them. Thinking back on it, I was that scared without even knowing anything about those guys. I got irritated because of personal stuff, too. The thing with my dad is still pretty complicated. I kept seeing things through those filters, and made arbitrary judgments based on that. Now I feel like I was never really seeing my senpai at all. Yeah, I really think so too. Thanks. Each of our senpai has their own crosses to bear, and their own strong convictions. I made it sound like real companions don't keep quiet about that. You need to share with us. But, if they had, would I have even tried to listen to them? Still, unless I speak up directly, nothing will change. Oh my, Yukatan, you look so mature. Uh, don't tease me like that. But I learned some things from you too, Junpei. And a lot from you. Risei-chan and Fuka too. They all showed me different perspectives. I should be grateful. No. You're the one who taught me so much. Thank you, Yukari chan. This is getting kind of embarrassing. Thanks to you two. Ah, such beautiful friendship. I'm glad to be part of the group, too. Jeez, oh, now I'm really getting sorry I started this. I said this is embarrassing. Why do you have to pile on too? <laughs> well, that's enough of this conversation. Okay then, let's hurry up and go rescue Raychan. Sure thing, Yukari. Alright, let's move up into the next floor. <laughs> the sixth floor of the clock tower. Not terrible, but not particularly easy either. And Karmarsan detects the scent of the Reaper, FOE. How much farther must we climb? Not that much farther, actually. We're almost halfway there! Halfway there! Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> no matter how many floors this tower has, we'll save Ray-chan in the end! Arf! Yeah, Kormara san says what he said. Everyone is in agreement. I'm sorry. I get impatient again. I'm counting on you all. I need to save Ray. Yay! Of course! We're gonna do this. <laughs> Arf arf. <laughs> All the mascot characters voicing in. And yeah, this place, uh. We're 
getting close to the end. I'm not going to reveal how many floors are in the clock tower, but Raychon is not too far away. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Let's Play Persona Q. In the next part, we take care of two more floors, and also something extra. So see you guys then. Bye.